Hey everyone, we're at the ASRock booth now at Computex 2019. ASRock's got a bunch of X570 boards. The main one is not on the wall right now, but we have a bunch of B-roll of it. It's the Aqua board. And then we also took one of the boards apart for Buildzoid to do a PCB analysis and VRM analysis while we're at the show. So definitely check back for his VRM uh, analysis, but we're hopefully gonna take apart one other board. It'll either be the ITX board or the Tai Chi, not sure which. If we haven't done it by the time this video goes up, then let us know what you care about more. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's Iron Claw RGB wireless gaming mouse. The Corsair Iron Claw focuses first on comfort with its palm grip approach and also uses a sub one millisecond wireless connection for the PC. You can toggle between wireless and Bluetooth connectivity, making it easy to control multiple PCs with one mouse, like a streaming PC and a gaming PC. The mouse has 10 programmable buttons, the PMW3391 18,000 DPI sensor, three zone RGB LEDs, and 50 million click lifespan for left and right mouse buttons. Learn more at the link in the description below. So first off, the pricing, we don't have pricing on anything just yet. Release date's gonna be July 7th when the Ryzen 3000 stuff comes out. Uh, but we can talk about the specs. So a lot of these boards have a similar or the same PC uh, VRM design. And the, for example, Gaming X, which is up there, the Phantom Gaming X at the top of the wall, and the Tai Chi share a VRM. So they use a 12 plus two design. They have uh, 50 amp power stages, not 100% clear on the brand. We've heard IR for this, but uh, I know they're also using a lot of DRMOS and Intercell stuff. And then it's got an Intercell controller on it. The ITX board obviously has a different VRM. That's a six plus two. Don't know the spec on the power stages, but what I can tell you is that it's got TB3 in the name because it supports Intel Thunderbolt 3, which was ASRock's primary marketing point. If it's something you care about, it is on the board, and it's one of the first or only boards in its form factor that supports Thunderbolt 3. Speaking of form factor, no micro ATX boards. Sorry, MSI and Gigabyte did not have any either. We'll keep an eye out. But for micro ATX fans, we haven't seen any yet at the show. Uh, ITX does appear to be a bit more popular this year than the last time. The Aqua is worth talking about specifically. That one's going to be a limited edition design. So they're making 999 of them. They are going to cost $999, probably 99 cents. But they, I don't think they're making 0.99 boards either. So uh, the Aqua is a, it's kind of like the Extreme Water Force, where it's just a water block on the card. It's a mono block, but it also cools the chipset. And the chipset cooling is a bigger challenge with X570 because it runs at 11 watts uh, average or 15 watts peak and it doesn't really downclock or slow down for thermal reasons. So uh, you'll need a fan on just about every board. Some of them can sync it passively, but not many. And then the Aqua will just do water cooling. It's a, it's a Halo product. I mean, that's like same people who buy the Extreme Water Force will buy that board, not meant for everyone. But we do have info on that one. So the Aqua has a unique design, it's using uh, a different PCB from the others on the wall here. 12 plus two inner cell. Uh, it's got 50 amp power stages, 60 amp chokes, and then also Thunderbolt 3. The creator, we have a, a separate video going up on with a PCB analysis. That's the one that we disassembled here. It's using a 35201 controller. And then we've got some close up photos of the power stages as well. As for the Tai Chi, Tai Chi is probably gonna be the one that is more interesting for the overclocking part of the audience, although it's not the the, the highest of the high end that ASRock has. It is among the higher end boards along with the Gaming X. Uh, so Tai Chi is primarily uh, just going to be a, a, another higher end X570 board. They're all pretty expensive this time because the chipset cost is so high. And also Gen 4, not easy, it turns out. Uh, and the PCB quality has had to go up on these boards, some of them, to deal with the signal integrity challenges that come with PCIe Gen 4. So uh, that that is a cost driver, is the PCB quality along with the chipset cost. I think that's most of the info I have for you on the ASRock boards. Hopefully the B-roll has suited you well and will help you see some of the smaller features because uh, we are getting crowded out of the booth. One last thing I wanna mention, the ITX board does something really cool, which is it uses an Intel mount. So it's an AMD board but it has an Intel uh, set of mounting holes for the CPU cooler, which is very interesting. The reason is so that ASRock can push in the, uh, the mounting point and avoid the keep out zone restrictions that AMD mounts have. So that's something that's just kind of unique. Uh, it'll be a bit confusing, I'm sure, when you're buying the boards, but you know now. So thanks for watching. Check back. Subscribe for more X570 coverage. Let us know if there's anything specific you want here at the show. We'll go find it and store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.